Okay. We'll watch this one. The worst items of Classic WoW. Where is Esfond still moving? Esfond, uh, where are you at? I'm, I'm respecting right now. Okay, all right. I'm like getting, I'm like getting like potions and stuff for you and everybody else. I'm actually like doing a lot of stuff. Okay. Don't read your chat. They're like morons. All right. All right, we'll watch this one here. The worst items of Classic WoW. This should be good. I like how he al already starts it off right in front of uh, of the soul of the whatever the fuck the harbinger right with shadow strike. You already know what one of them is going to be. I think that's pretty fucking funny. Okay. More side items equal slash inspect. No. Wait, thunder fury. Well, thunder fury is good. What are you talking about? Oh, that's actually fucking badass. Damn. Oh, dude. Yeah, this is the Path of hey Exile guys. music. What's this up, is like Mad the season uh, here, back with another video for you music. in my Azeroth Arsenal series. Okay. Yeah, the series does still exist. Sorry, it's been a while. Usually for these, I like to show off the best of the best weapons. Ones that have been firmly established in the lore the, the as one. these mythical items wielded by only the most powerful figures. But in this one, we're going to go to the opposite end of the spectrum. We'll cover the biggest disappointments. Oh, that items thing that, sucks so much dick, dude. If players that you have equipped, they would shake their heads and laugh. Yeah, that's this basically particular grouping strike. will be from classic World of Warcraft because, well, as much as I taunt vanilla, the itemization was all over the place. It was the growing stages still, and there was a lot of experimentation. Some were great successes, and others great failures. Wait, what is that staff there? Increases armor by a thousand for ten seconds, but cannot cast spells or attacks for the duration of the spell. Is that good? That I see I feel like that would maybe be good for like a couple of things. Is it best? I don't know. What better way ridiculous. than to start off with Vendor Strike? Okay, here we go. This was a pull type weapon found in the first raid, the Molten Core. This is an amazing item, from the one Sulfur of the best. Harbinger boss. It's quite the unique case, too, because it's a two for one. You looted the okay. base as Shadow Strike, but if you used it, it would transform into a new weapon entirely, Thunder which strike. is Thunder Strike. That way you can Vendor Let both me put of them. you in the moment. This was the very beginning of raiding back then. No one knew what they were doing, and these the raids Blizzard were mad scrambles for the mythical purple quality items. Coming from dungeons, even a full yeah, set of blues exactly was right. a status symbol for a good while there. So how could a purple, let alone a purple weapon, possibly be bad? It's well, true. for a few reasons. First is due to the weapon speed. Both versions have a speed of 3.10, which is quite fast for the it's time. It's so bad, man. Back then, when we had like, variable it, weapon so speeds, bad. the slower the better, since your ability right. damage would increase the higher the damage range the weapon had. It also had a lower than usual DPS than other weapons in the raid. A direct comparison of an actual good two-hander is the Obsidian Edged Blade, which had a slower speed great stats, and about five more DPS, yeah, which see, is I pretty See, I wish big. I fucking had never got that back in the day. Point two is the fact that, yeah, that there was are a no big stats. Dick sword. Even if a weapon OED. has a fast speed, they can sometimes be handy for hunters just to use for the stats, yep. but both effects are damage procs. And pretty unimpressive ones at that, with Shadow Strike having a life steal, and Thunder Strike having a chain lightning effect. I wonder if Blizzard just put this item in the game, and then after players kept saying over and over and over how bad it was, Blizzard just thought it was funny to leave it in the game and have it still be shitty. Right? Maybe it was like a meme to them that they just kept the shitty item in the game. And lastly, it's simply because they're pole arms, one of the least used weapon types in the game at that point. 3.1. Only a few classes could even wield. What weapon is that, boys? Tell me what weapon that is. Anybody that doesn't know what weapon that is, is banned in chat. That's the Ice Barb Spear. This weapon right here was the badass, best fucking weapon for you to get. Whenever you hit level 51, you queued up an AV, you won that fucking AV, and you got the Ice Barb Spear. 
Like, this was the main fucking item you had, man. Like, I took this all the way up to 60. It was so goddamn good. It was amazing. And as you may know, these were still the days of weapon skills. You had to level each one manually, and since there were so few pole arms in the game, most people had a low skill in wielding them anyways. So, because of all of this, players were eventually able to look past its shiny color, and it became the black sheep of weapons in vanilla. Shadow Strike, Thunder Strike, people preferred Vendor Strike or Nexus Strike, referring to the material enchanters get when disenchanting it's a great it. Item. Truly Rest amazing. assured, if you were walking around with this back then, you'd be on the receiving end of quite a few derisive remarks. I've Looking never really seen that, anybody though, that had that back in the day. I do look to it quite fondly, solely due to its uniqueness. How many items were there that transformed upon use? Off the top of my head, there's just Anathema oh, and Benediction, like a few. which were the priest I don't know when that was. So, although it sucked, it did have that redeeming quality of being unique and yeah. interesting, I thought. Okay. Okay. Something that just plain sucked, though, was the Lion Horn of Stormwind. A trinket which, when struck in combat, has a 1% chance hey, of increasing all party members' sank. armor at 150. That's, that's An exactly item so bad, what it even has a grammar mistake in its description. And like, I feel like I, really yeah, I don't even know what item it was. Level 32 pets. Pets. It was so long yep, ago. That's exactly what I was thinking. Holy shit. Really need to explain just why this is so horrible, okay. but I'll do it anyways. At yeah, the maximum it's awful, level, that's why. 250 armor is nothing, let alone a 1% chance to proc it. It's about a 1% difference at the max Wasn't level. Wasn't that like a BOE? I'm pretty sure it was. Armor is something that scales with level, but since it requires a laughable level 58 to equip, it doesn't matter anyways. The party member bonus can be effectively ignored because only the tank should be getting hit with physical attacks anyways. Yeah, it's not gonna, it's and if a that's terrible not the fucking case, item. a 1% chance absolute at terrible 250 fucking item. isn't going to help you. But wait, we've overlooked something all these years. Can you see what we missed? That's no, right. I can't. It's not unique, so slap two of these bad boys oh, on, and that's you'll be the horniest player that's in really, the game. That's really, really smart. That's two, Next, that's 500 we have armor. another trinket, which is the essence of the pure flame. I actually wanted this back in the day because I thought it would be really cool if I could use this and then have things attack me and die. Now, it might sound really stupid, and that's because it was, but the idea that I had in my head of doing that was like really really cool i really wanted to have that for like doing like dead mines runs that was like my ideal i'll just have this trinket and i'll just kill everything in dead mines and it'll just attack me but then obviously all the attacks would miss and it wouldn't even be a good use of my time it was so fucking i was so dumb back then it was embarrassing at this point i'd like to remark just how few viable trinkets there were in the game it seemed like per class you could count on one hand the ones that were even decent so for a trinket to make this list it has to be pretty bad Yep. This one, as you can see, has just one effect. When struck in combat, inflicts 13 fire damage yeah, to the attacker. Shield, exactly, another, one. another item so bad, it even got a nickname, often called the Essence of the Pure Nexus. In the group scene, if you're a tank, your main focus is reducing damage taken, not dealing it out, and even still, 13 true. per hit is nothing. That's loser talk. The only thing I can say Tanks is that the there were some sets possible. designed for stacking thorns for power leveling other people in dungeons. Shoutouts to the Hobbs way of pulling. So I can't say Dude, this is entirely that. useless, Yo, let's watch just that after mostly this. useless. Next though, we have something that really is useless. Oh boy. It's not an actual item, oh so boy. it may be considered yeah, cheating, this was great. but something that used to happen back in the day was that Shaman set pieces could drop for the Alliance, mm -hmm. and Paladin pieces could drop for the Horde. Great game. Remember, Amazing it game. wasn't until the Burning Crusade that both factions could roll both classes, so there's not even an argument here. These items would literally be useless if they dropped for the wrong faction. Okay. It's kind of hard to believe. Stuff like that would never pass today, but it actually happened. Plenty of stupid shit like that happens nowadays in WoW. Like, I like everybody to say that, like, oh, Blizzard always made dumb shit mistakes back then. Now, you know what would happen is somehow if you got that item and you were able to, uh, you know, like, transfer it over and, like, imagine if somebody got all of the Lightforge belts on Horde and they transferred over to Alliance... Blizzard would probably ban them for exploiting the economy nowadays. 
So Blizzard did not have a monopoly on mistakes then that they don't now. No, I'm serious. It's what they would do. Like I said, vanilla itemization was interesting to say the least. Yeah, but oh it yeah, booty bay off now. That's true too. But the same problem arose with other pieces. There were plenty of plate items that Tell had to intellect or caster base stats. Something that's also useless for the horde. Yeah, that, on the aligned that's side, fucking useless. you could get right. shaman oriented gear with intellect mail armor, but paladins could still equip that we'll without a big happens. penalty. It wasn't a huge deal back in the day for classes to wear the wrong armor type just because they had good stats. In fact, you'd see plenty of paladins walking around in cloth gear. In that old Leroy Jenkins video, they were yep. trying to get the priest shoulders yep, for a paladin, shoulders. in fact. I remember that so, very clearly. these items, as useless as they are, at least aren't harmful to anyone but yourself. Who cares if that warrior is rocking Vendor Strike? Bless his heart, he's having fun. There were some items that... Fun is for casuals. I like all these people that talk about, oh, I play the game for fun. Oh, I'm just relaxing and play the game. If you worry so much about having fun, like usually, I mean, there are some, you know, especially when you're getting like really, really high min maxing and there's things that aren't really very fun, but it's still the meta, you have to do it. But like, in general, I personally never had fun being shitty. Like I've, I can never, I, I cannot think of a single instance where I lost a game and I had fun at the same time. It's never happened. That went beyond that though. One of them is the Skullforge Reaver. At first glance, this isn't horrible. Yep. A nice weapon for an introduction to raiding. It's blue, a slower weapon speed, which is good for your main hand, and best of all, it looks cool. It has a purple glow to it, and if you sheathe it, it went on your back, which was a pretty unique thing back then. Yeah, it was fucking badass. It had badass. a whole ninja thing going on if you oh, had two equipped, on, which definitely gave it some come points. On, dude. But the main worry here the is the fucking Riven Dare's Death Charger. Chance on hit drains the target what? for two shadow damage every second, leeches that what to the, the wielder, today? and lasts for I 30 didn't have seconds. Fun losing. Well, first off, yeah, this, this is just fucking sucks. garbage. You'd much rather have some stats instead. And it's not to say that proc-based effects were bad back then. There are some great Most ones, of them were bad. but 60 life over like 30 seconds. Like 90% of them are bad. Like I, there is one proc that we you have is like level 30 sword. It does like, it does like 50 damage over 30 seconds. It's just fucking dog shit. It's complete fucking dog shit. And I, I don't know how that stuff made it through beta. Honestly, I have no idea. It wasn't the best. But the it's worst part yeah, is, it is that it took up a debuff slot. Back then, debuffs were limited to 8 slots until patch 1.7, where it was increased to 16 total. All 40 of your members shared these slots, and you had to sort of ration them for only the most important debuffs, like the Warrior Sunder Armor, the Warlock's Curse of Elements, and so on. It was so bad that some guilds required you to even avoid certain talent builds. The Warrior's Deep Wounds, which procs on crits, is a useful talent for solo play or PvP, what? But in yeah, it rating, amazing. it takes up a valuable slot. So certainly, you wouldn't want- Chance on hit drains target for two shadow damage every one second and transfers it to the caster. That's actually an amazing item. Like, you could use that for healing and you'd be able to heal for so much damage. Like, you'd be able to heal 60 damage, no, 120 damage a second or a minute. It's on insane. a weapon like this, taking up one- That's yeah, really, really good. And you probably have a talking to if you brought it into a raid. I know, because I did it back then. I brought the very same weapon into my first Molten Core raid on my Rogue, yeah, and, how'd that and the go? first thing they told me was to replace it after the raid. Hey, it come glows, on. So that's the Ninja a good part about it. was just too cool to pass up. Give me a break here. Huh. Next, we have the Flight Blade Throwing Axe, which you could find off the War Master Voon boss in the Blackrock Spire raid. What is this? Before the Burning Crusade expansion, one of your options for ranged damage that at all. were throwing weapons. These could be throwing daggers or axes, as you can see. Uh -oh. And for the most part, they were useless because uh -oh. as a hunter, yeah, you this seems use like dog shit with them, to me. of course. And as a rogue or a warrior, you'd much rather have a normal ranged weapon okay. in your range slot for the stats. And also yeah, because no you yeah, could exactly. never exhaust those. These throwing weapons had a certain amount of charges on them, and when you exhausted them, they were gone forever. I think the only thing you could say is that these is that were faster how, than the normal. Was that actually how it would work? I don't even remember because 
until about the middle of Burning Crusade, I didn't know that the weapon, your, your ranged weapon, would calculate its stats onto your character. I thought it was only going to give you those stats if you had it equipped. So I had a gray gun until like level 70. Like I, I did, I had no idea because I thought it would only work if I had the gun out. And I was like, well, I never take the gun out anyway. So what's the point in getting a new gun? Who cares? And yeah, I just kept this gray like level 17 gun. And I remember I have a screenshot of this in a, I, I think it's like an UBRS or something. I, I was absolutely dog shit. Normal ranged weapons. So maybe slightly yeah, I was more convenient a for retard. pulling, but other than that, having this drop off of the boss was the equivalent of getting socks for oh. Christmas. And lastly, we have the Spire of the Stone Shaper. First off, Great uh, another weapon that's quite Incredible unique, item. but also quite yeah, worthless. Uh, Even worse, actually, yeah. because it can get you killed. Quite easily, in fact. On use, a good increase item. your armor by 1,000 for 10 seconds, See, this is a PvP but you can't right cast here. spells or attack during the duration of the spell. It's bad. Next item. What? Okay, okay. I guess I should at least explain why this is bad. It's, it's well, first, it's let's great. look at the targeted clientele. Tanking druids would be the most reasonable choice, yeah, I think. Yeah, that's a flag carry something you gotta understand exactly. with classic tanking yeah, is that threat was actually really hard to get. That's very it's true. It's one of the reasons why warriors were the best tanks. is because the they had a DPS. huge arsenal of taunts and yep. threat generators at their disposal. Mm -hmm. Druids, on the other hand, along with paladins, mm -hmm. found it much harder to hold aggro on everything yep. other than single target. So, basically pacifying yourself for 10 seconds is like the last thing you want as a tank. The armor doesn't matter if nothing's hitting you. That's right. And that's not even just for tanks. Can you think for any staff wielding class why you'd want to basically stun yourself for 10 seconds for a little added physical defense? Well, because they can't I hit can. you. And worst of all, that's when you use it, it's a debuff, be so you just can't click it off. Oh! I mean, I think it's appropriate since it does more okay. harm than good, but still, that's pretty hardcore. Yeah, that actually so, is a really So, for all item. intents and purposes, let's just call this one the Spire of the Group Wiper. I actually really like that. Like, that some items are basically just traps, and so you can tell if a bad player, if somebody's a bad player or not. Because, like, if they have this weapon, if they have, like, Shadow Strike, if they have, like, that, that Rogue Sword, you just know, like, okay, boom, there it is. That guy sucks dick. You automatically know it. You don't even have to inspect him or read his fucking name. You just look at what's on his back, and you're like, that's an idiot. And I actually like that. It was kind of good. Now, obviously, it sucks whenever you loot one of these items, but it makes things a little bit more exciting. All right, I think that's pretty good for this one. Good back in the day. I do have more, but I think this is a good stopping point. If you think I missed any, feel free to let me know. Like I said, most of them are going to be from Classic, just because everything was still new, and even the developers didn't fully know what they were doing still. I'll try to do this series more, as I still have a lot to talk about, so if you God decide to join right. me, I'll see you then. I hope you found okay. the video interesting this is or a good entertaining. Video. Like it if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. There are so many uh, items like that. I There were even items like that in BC and RAF that were just fucking Farewell dog shit for now, that nobody mortals. ever wanted. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.